Coming up on Tech News Today, the gold iPhone sounds like it's selling like hotcakes, or maybe Apple just didn't make enough of them. Plus, Pinterest is introducing ads, and the future of Windows RT. Is it in phablets? All that and more next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, September 20th, 2013. Tech News Today is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code TNT9. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple products and smartphones are worth at Gazelle.com. And by ProXPN. It's a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the code TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. I'm Jason Howell. Tom Merritt has the day off. I believe he's celebrating his 10-year anniversary. Happy anniversary, Tom. Happy anniversary. Celebrating his am anniversary by watching Tech News Today. Right. Yeah. We hope that you'll enjoy the show, Tom. Everybody else, uh, <laughs> kicking around the uh, technology stories of the day, starting as we do each time with the top 10 stories of the day in the News Fuse. Apple's latest iPhones are now on sale online, worldwide, and in retail stores across Europe, Asia, and the U.S. If you're wanting that new gold phone 5, uh, gold iPhone 5S, however, you might be disappointed. Apple has confirmed a general shortage of the iPhone 5S in a statement to All Things D and saying the phone has already sold out and is in limited supply in certain models in certain stores. The Wall Street Journal is also reporting Apple is now instructing suppliers to increase production of the gold iPhone 5S in order to meet the high demand it's seeing. And we need more tacky gold iPhone 5Ss. Hey. All Things D is ending its partnership with Dow Jones. Kara Swisher and Walt Mossberg will be taking All Things D independent at the end of this year. Now, Walt Mossberg will also be leaving the Wall Street Journal at the end of the year. Kara Swisher says starting 2014, All Things D will still be producing conferences under a new corporate structure with new partners and investors. Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer has some concerns about Google's business practices. During a presentation at Microsoft's financial analyst meeting, Ballmer highlighted how Google makes money in consumer services. He said, quote, they have this incredible, amazing, dare I say, monopoly that we're the only person left on the planet trying to compete with. Bing now accounts for 17.9% of sh search share in the U.S., which is second only to Google at almost 67%. If you haven't heard, there's a bug in the iOS 7 lock screen that allows access to stored photos and email. An Apple spokesperson told All Things D that the company is aware of the issue and will deliver a fix in, the, in a future software update. You can protect yourself right now from the flaw by going into your settings, then Control Center, then Turn Access on lock screen off. The weird thing is I can't seem to replicate this problem. I'm trying. Maybe it's Patrick. Maybe I'm just a bad hacker. Ads are coming to Pinterest, y'all. In a new blog post, Pinterest explained its new system of promoted pins, which will allow corporate partners to promote certain posts within category streams and search results. So far, the model is still in test mode and resembles efforts by other companies like Twitter to pull data from a user's profile so the ad system can charge users interested in a certain product and then promote pins within their stream to make sure that they see it. CEO Ben Silberman says, we'll always let you know if somebody paid for what you see or where you see it. According to documents leaked by Edward Snowden, UK spy agency Government Communications Headquarters hacked into a Belgian phone network called Belgicom. The surveillance was called Operation Socialist. Belgicom's uh, customers include institutions like the European Parliament, the European Council, and the European Commission. Twitter is talking to banks to grow its underwriting partners for its upcoming initial public offering. It's not uncoming, it's definitely upcoming. And is in the process of finalizing the fee structure, say three people familiar with the matter to Reuters. Twitter chief financial officer Mike Gupta is leading the microblogging platform's IPO and is in touch with the investment banks about their roles, says one of the three people. And an IPO could come as early as Thanksgiving. 
According to researchers from Quark's lab, Apple has the ability to read your iMessages whenever they want. Apple claimed iMessages use secure end-to-end encryption, but the researchers found a way to get around that using a man-in-the-middle attack with a fake security certificate. Full findings will be presented at the HITB Security Conference next month. Ride-sharing services like Lyft and Uber got some good news this week as a California regulatory body voted to authorize the services. In a 5-0 decision, the California Public Utilities Commission said the companies, which had been operating in a legal gray area of sorts, are now officially a new form of service called transportation network companies. The services are changing the traditional taxi industry by letting passengers hail private cars directly from mobile devices. Want to edit Office Docs on your Android or iOS device? Well, Google just made Quick Office available for free to anybody with a Google account. If you sign into the new Quick Office app for Android or iOS before September 26th, you'll get an extra 10 gigabytes of Google Drive storage for two years. Meanwhile, at the Microsoft Financial Analyst meeting, Steve Ballmer implied that Office would be coming to iPad and Android tablets in the future. Currently, Office is built for phones. This episode of TNT is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock.com is the place to find the perfect image or video for your next creative project, whether it's for a website or a publication or an advertisement or a video or any type of project. You can choose from over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Many contributors to Shutterstock are professional photographers and artists. They do really good stuff. And Shutterstock adds 10,000 images every day. If you think about that, you could go every single day and you'd never get through them all. I mean, that is quite a bit of inventory. You can choose individual image packs or a monthly subscription for the best deal, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You can download 25 images per day with a standard subscription, so that's a nice high number. And you can download any image in any size and just pay one price. You've got shareable light boxes if you're working with a team and everybody's trying to figure out what images are the best. I can throw a bunch of images in a light box and Ayaz can go look at them later and give me some feedback. And they've got an award-winning iPad app. You can search on the go and use it to display images during presentations. They have multilingual customer service in more than a dozen countries and full-time customer support throughout the week. And you don't even need a credit card to try out Shutterstock today. You just sign up for a free account, just start using the account and begin using Shutterstock to help imagine what your next project could be like. Save some favorite images to a light box to review later. When you decide to purchase, use the offer code TNT9. That's TNT, the number nine, and new accounts will receive 25% off any package. At Shutterstock.com, and for 25% off new accounts, use the offer code TNT9, and we thank Shutterstock for their support of Tech News Today. All right, joining us now to talk uh, talk through some of the stories of the day is Lindsay Turrentine, Editor-in-Chief of CNET Reviews. Hello, welcome back to the show, Lindsay. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I like the art on the wall behind you. Thank you. It's mostly kid art. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're you good can, artists, yeah. those kids. The paints. And, and of course, our Friday regular, Len Peralta, internet cartoonist extraordinaire, is going to be uh, Providing pa- new painting art. through his own <laughs> kid art for the show. <laughs> That's right. I will be doing some incredible kid art for you guys today. Finger it's painting only today? Uh, I hope so. If, uh, <laughs> if I can make it work, I will do that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's start off with uh, these uh, these gold iPhone 5s is selling like hotcakes. Um, if you hadn't basically bought one within the first few minutes of when they went on sale at 12:01, I was actually I stayed up. I stayed up until 12:01 and refresh, refresh Apple Store. Did you get a gold one? I did get a gold one. However, I realized a little too late that. And the store didn't actually come up for me until about 12.05, but whatever. And then I went through the whole thing, and I said, yes, Verizon, gold, I know exactly what I want. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, what kind of data plan would you like? Would you like the 2 gigabyte per month or the 5 or the 10? And I was like, well, well no, I'm I'm an unlimited Verizon customer. Can't do that. You have to go through Verizon directly. Oh. Apple doesn't want, it, it, it doesn't give you an option to basically pay the full retail price. But all is well, and I will be getting mine on the 24th if the shipping numbers hold. Doesn't sound like that's the case uh, for a lot of folks that waited a little bit too long. Many people have seen uh, dates, shipping dates slip to October. Uh, As I mentioned in the news views, Apple says, yeah, uh, demand for the new iPhones has been incredible. We're currently sold out or they have limited supply in a variety of stores. Wall Street Journal says 
Apple is uh, telling suppliers, get those gold iPhone uh, 5Ss cranking out because we're running out of supply. They're also, I've seen around the internet people saying, I went to a store and there just aren't that many, but I was there in sort of the first rush of the morning, which leads me to believe that Apple maybe just underestimated how many of this new color would be so popular. Lindsay, is this just kind of the same old same for Apple where people say it's all over for them and then they have a huge launch day or is there something special about that this gold iPhone? Well, I, I okay, so first of all, when the gold iPhone was announced, everybody laughed and said, oh, that's for Asia. This gold's a big deal there. And I said, no, I want the gold. I don't care what everybody says. And it turns out that everybody kind of secretly wanted gold. And I'm just, the thing I'm not sure about is whether that's intentional on Apple's part. I mean, I think that the whole no ability to pre-order for the 5S may have been, I don't know, may have been a little bit um, of, a, of a way to get people to line up for the gold iPhone. Because when, you, when it comes down to it, the gold color is kind of the most interesting thing about the new hardware. Yeah, Besides the reader. It, it's the, the idea that somebody can tell right away that you have the new iPhone. Because if you have the 5S and it's the black one, it looks the same as the old one. You have the the white one, it looks the same. Or I guess they have that space gray, excuse me. It might be slightly different than the black. But the gold one, oh, I, that must be the new one. So I, I think that's part, partly part of the uh, draw is that people want to be able to say, I have the new one. Look, flips the back. And here's the gold. Uh, I, I'd imagine that Apple didn't expect it to be popular because it's not exactly... Gold's kind of on the. It's been out for a long time. That color's not like. I think around the '90s it was pretty pretty nice. Or like if you're oh, kind yeah. of a gangster or yeah. something. Apple yeah, Apple introduced the gold iPhone because they they thought that people would consider it a '90s accessory. That's exactly right. I think Don't you watch all, Goodfellas and other things like that? I think this is all. This is the 80s. this this was a this is a manipulative, orchestrated thing. If you don't have enough gold iPhones, then people want gold iPhones. And that goes for all sorts of different products. It's not just an Apple product. So now everyone hears, oh, it's, you know, it's hard to get one. Well, I could get a space gray or I could get a white or, or a silver or I could get the gold. Well, the gold's like the cool one because everybody else wants it too. So, it, you know, it, it kind of creates this frenzy. It's like a, it's like a flash sale. Flash sale of Apple products. It's like the Henry Hill uh, iPhone. It's like, okay, lots of gold and next will be cocaine. <laughs> well, you know, our 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 uh, reviewer Scott Stein, um, you, you know, he had he had the new phone, but it was in space gray. And once everybody updated to iOS seven, he was like, "I'm on the subway, and I'm the only one who has this, and nobody knows." <laughs> <laughs> I want people to know. Nobody knows I have this special one. It looks the same. We still don't have any numbers on the 5C, which has now been uh, officially on sale for one week. Uh, I, I would guess that by Monday, Apple will talk about its grand 5C, 5S. Together, they, they, they seem like crazy record-breaking numbers. I don't know that for a fact, but I, I would guess. It'll be because the best-selling plastic phone they've done since the iPhone 3GS. Well, I'm not sure that they'll break out the 5C numbers. I, you know, they didn't break out the iPad Mini numbers last year. They made it seem like, you know, with with the fourth-gen iPad plus the Mini, yes, best iPad weekend ever. But you know, if you don't break out the numbers, then you don't have to admit that maybe one of the products didn't sell as well as the other. Anyway, uh, apparently um, Tim Cook was down at the Palo Alto the store, uh, store this morning greeting customers, and everyone thought that was great. I saw a lot of pictures of him in my Twitter stream. People saying, look at this, Tim Cook. Or a stunt double. Yeah. yeah. Somebody looks a lot like him. Boy, those wax figures are getting better all the time. All right, let's move on to uh, the future of Microsoft. Right, so Microsoft had a financial analyst meeting yesterday, and Terry Myerson, who's now the head of Microsoft Operating Systems, talked about the future of Windows. He says, Windows, Windows RT was our first ARM tablet, and as phones extend into tablets, expect us to see many more ARM tablets, Windows ARM tablets in the future. So it sounds like he's talking about Windows for on Windows RT on smaller devices like tablets. Myerson also said that we should really have one silicon interface for all our devices. We should have one set of developer APIs on all of our devices, and all of the apps we bring to end users should be available on all of our devices. So Myerson used to be the head of Windows Phone, again, with that reorganization, head of Microsoft Operating System Division. Lindsay, what do you think is going to survive? Do you think RT is going to eat Windows Phone? Is Phone going to ERT, or is there some weird uh, other, I guess, 
version of this that's going to happen. Scenario, yeah. I, I go you. for the some weird other version, honestly. <laughs> but I think that both of those operating systems, RT and Windows Phone, have had, you know, proponents and detractors, but they both have big problems. And so if I were in their shoes, I think I'd be considering like, okay, well, let's take the best from both and see if we can make something entirely new. But we'll see. Man, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, the whole thing is a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. Some some other some other scenario, a combination of the two. I, I mean, I just don't really see Windows RT with a future. Period. Yeah, I would think phone have the bigger future because it has the larger app selection, and yeah. because Myerson was the head of Windows Phone, maybe he's got that close to his heart. A lot of the things that Windows 8 has been doing has been taking from Windows Phone when it comes to a lot of the uh, the UI gestures and things. They want to have a consistent experience. Uh, I'm thinking that RT and and Phone have to merge at some point because RT is this bizarre thing yeah. that exists. But then how do you differentiate between something that's actually a phone where you need some sort of a carrier involvement and then something else that is an RT device. It's, you know, it's really just like a naming problem. Well, that and the, the <laughs> apps don't work together. Oh, that too. Yeah, I don't know if you need to differentiate necessarily. I mean, you look at iOS, right, which is a tablet OS, but also a phone app, uh, OS, behave flexibly. I think it's possible. I'm, I'm just still curious about that. There's like a Nokia large, the phablet style thing. What happens to the five inch device? Because that could have a phone OS or it could have a tablet OS. And that's where they need to figure out what's going on. Because otherwise, five or six inches, should there be a line where you basically sacrifice a ton of battery life because you're using RT? Mm -hmm. Or should you be using phone, which actually has a better uh, energy efficiency? So it just seems like they have to figure out a way to put this all together. Uh, another thing that's been trying to put together is Twitter's IPO. Uh, as we mentioned in the news views, it sounds like this is going to happen sooner than later. Reuters uh, has anonymous sources that say, that say Twitter is talking to banks. They're trying to figure out what their underwriting syndicate will be for the upcoming IPO, finalizing the fee structure. If you're not familiar with how this goes down, it's pretty normal for underwriters to receive somewhere around 7% of IPO proceeds. But if you've got a bigger IPO, something that's, it's kind of, it's, it's, going to have more fanfare say the facebook ipo would be a great example of that then underwriters would go for maybe m a smaller percentage uh because you'd get a little bit of cachet for saying that you were involved in the deal in fact uh facebook ipo it was just a 1.1 percent in a fee pool for underwriters uh, because of the deal size and because it was facebook twitter's valuation is now estimated at around 15 billion by analysts so if you're an underwriting bank, if Twitter sells about 10% of its shares, overall fee is around 4 or 5%, you're looking at a 60 to 70 million profit. Now, those are just general numbers, but in general, it seems pretty positive. Lindsay, I think it's, it's inevitable. We're going to see a Twitter IPO sooner than later. We all pretty much expected it. But how, how do you see things changing for the company once it's a public company? Well, I think that the changes are probably kind of obvious, right? Twitter does not have much of a business model yet, and you are going to see more advertisements. And I think there's no way around it. There are going to be more and more commercial opportunities in Twitter. I mean, when you think about the valuation, which is, what, $1 billion short of what Facebook's valuation was, and we, we kind of saw what happened with that. But I think that at the point of its IPO, Facebook was actually a more developed commercial business than Twitter is. So I think things are going to have to change pretty radically on, on the sort of making money side of things for Twitter. I mean, once a company goes public, usually it just acts in a slower way, right? That's because they have to make sure that everything they're doing is in the shareholders' interests. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be dealing with, with lawsuits all the time. But Twitter, I think, has been getting so cozy with television that it seems like that's probably what they're going to continue doing, trying to be that that other arm. So there's Nielsen and Twitter having that kind of partnership and Twitter buying all these companies. I would think we would have a lot less acquisitions because Twitter bought a ton of different companies that's made it this giant kind of, not conglomerate yet, but they've taken apart tweet deck and they've taken a bunch of these tv uh ratings companies so maybe we're going to see more of a defined purpose for twitter much more television stuff and like Lindsay's saying we're gonna see a lot more ads we're gonna see a lot more promoted tweets everywhere but i don't think we're going to see quick movements like when they introduced that that bar the dick costolo bar on the uh, twitter app and then everyone got mad and they took it right away i think an ipo version of twitter a public version would not be taking that away yeah and and we've talked so much in the past about how twitter twitter's 
big, biggest issue is obviously it's it's trying to figure out what an ad structure would look like that doesn't turn away users, but also just how to get new users to get Twitter. I, I'm still to this day, and I've been on Twitter every day for, what, six years. S half the time I want to tweet something, and I'm like, you know, it's not worth it because too many people won't get what I'm referencing. And it's like too many hashtags would be required, and I'd have to explain myself and all the out replies of people who... And it's like there is some sort of like a, you might get it, or Lindsay might get it because we're all in the same industry, but... It's hard to scale a lot of the conversations that happen on Twitter. And because it's such a real-time beast, I I don't know how they go about organizing that sort of thing without kind of taking the fun aspect away from Twitter as well. Well, Twitter's tried with the Discovery tab, right? They've tried to have that thing or they have the, mm -hmm. uh, what's the word? The, they actually have hashtags on television shows or at least TV shows are doing this. They're standardizing these things. So you could at least find it that way. But yeah, they've been trying to figure out when Twitter shifted from what are you what are you having from for lunch versus world events, that discovery tab became much more important. So I would think more of a portal style thing would actually have to come in. Wow, there's gonna be some horribly boring like '90s revival. Like here's the Twitter portal to tell you here's the news of the day. And you the just really shows. like the '90s, I think. Today is my '90s day. It's, it sounds like you're just hoping that people bring back the spirit of the '90s. I'm gonna wear my final. I didn't wear my final shirt today. Darn. What, what was I thinking? What. Missed opportunity. All right, let's take a moment to thank Gazelle, our second sponsor in this episode of Tech News Today. New iPhones, If even if you haven't ordered one yet, gazelle.com wants to buy your used phone or gadget for a limited time, in fact. Gazelle is allowing you to lock today's pricing in for your iPhone while giving you until October 31st to send it in. This is actually really helpful because you have time to get the new iPhone Maybe you weren't up at midnight. I, that's I, understandable. But it's something that you plan to do. You can lock in that rate from Gazelle before you even send them your old one. You don't have to worry about being without. Gazelle makes use, makes selling your used gadgets fast and simple. You just go to gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Find your item. Tell Gazelle the condition that it's in. And then you get an offer for your gadgets. And you even get free shipping to send in your gadgets to Gazelle. When Gazelle is ready to pay you, you get paid fast by check, by PayPal, or for an extra 5% using an Amazon gift card. Risk-free, too. Offers a good for 30 days, gives you time to transfer data or set up your new uh, device. And again, special promotion until October 31st, so you get a nice locked-in quote until the end of October. Gazelle will also wipe your data for free. You don't have to worry about that. Trustworthy, Gazelle's paid over $100 million to over 600,000 customers, and it's just really, really easy to use. Go to gazelle.com now to get an offer for your iPhone, lock in today's price, and then send your phone in by October 31st. Do it now because your phone may lose value the longer you wait. That's gazelle.com, and we thank them for their support of Tech News today. All right, let's talk about Pinterest. Offering ads to customers, are there going to be riots? Uh, probably. Lots <laughs> of riots and violence and horribleness. Like, I didn't ask for these ads. Yes. Yeah. I'm fully expecting that. <laughs> well, maybe. The Pinterest community seems pretty nice. Yeah, I'd probably buy stuff anyway. Really they, they buy things bunch. for a riot. But anyway, the, Pinterest actually sent out emails and had a blog post saying to users that ads are coming. And the ads on Pinterest, uh, they're not exactly figured out yet, according to the blog post saying we don't have all the details. But they did claim that they're going to be tasteful, so no flashy banners or pop-ups. Transparent, you'll always know if somebody paid for something. They're claiming it's going to be relevant so that if you're pinning things about a topic, you'll get an ad that kind of goes with that. It's supposed to be uh, used uh, based on feedback as well. And for the first test, Pinterest is going to promote a few pins and for category feeds. And an example they gave in their blog post was a pin for a Darth Vader outfit from a costume shop might be promoted in a search for Halloween. But nobody's paying for anything yet. They're just testing this out. Lindsay, how do you, how do you think the ads are going to shake out on Pinterest? Do you see riots coming? No, no. Okay. Actually, I think that Pinterest is in some ways a way better platform for ads than Twitter. It's, and when you think about what people are doing on Pinterest, it's very consumption oriented or activity oriented, right? Like everybody I follow from my personal life on Pinterest is, is talking about Halloween costumes or, you know, or like making candy or some beautiful outfit that they want to buy. And I think people are absolutely, if it's a good ad, in a good place for a beautiful looking thing, people will pay attention to it. They don't really care. They just want to see the, the goods, you know? I actually am really bullish on the success of ads for Pinterest. 
unless they do it badly. But so far, Pinterest has been pretty well executed. I agree um, with you, Lindsay. I, I half of Pinterest, uh, and I've I've really I ignored Pinterest for the better part of the the whole last year until recently because I wanted to buy furniture, and so all of a sudden I've got all these like cool boards and they're inspiring. And half the time, it's really just clicking through to where I can buy that cool. I don't know, couch cushion that I hadn't seen before. And so there's this whole kind of like, in a way, everything's for sale on Pinterest structure that I think we're all pretty used to. And if the ads can be targeted pretty well towards what I'm probably interested in based on who I'm following, the boards that I'm, that I, that I'm spending time on and products that I'm liking, I think it is probably one of the best places to introduce ads of all the social networks out there. Yeah, and the layout of Pinterest also seems like it's really easy that even if you did see an ad, you might not notice it as an ad because everything has these images, you have a little bit of text. Yeah. And if it's just slightly like a different color, said it was sponsored, that it just your eye will easily either look at it or you'll glance past it. And that kind of thing is doesn't seem like an obtrusive experience, unlike if you're on Twitter or Facebook and you see like sponsored post and it has nothing to do with what you're looking at. That seems like that's more distracting. But something like Pinterest where you can like things and have it change with your feedback that probably is going to work really well. And that, that's, that's a real serious business model. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't done it sooner, to be honest. I, <laughs> I, I was kind of reading the news thinking, wait a minute, why, why didn't this start nine months ago? I don't understand. Yeah, and, and, and in a way, it's sort of like, oh, Pinterest didn't have ads yet? Huh, all right. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Might that's make what the whole page about. a tiny bit messier, but... They were just kind of enjoying themselves, pinning things like, wait, we should make money. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of users, and they love this service. We should make some money. Uh, best of luck, Pinterest. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe in a couple of months we'll all talk about how Pinterest was ruined by ads. But it does seem like if 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 they can roll it out in a way that doesn't uh, diminish the experience, it's probably... As long as they're not way. selling stickers like those other companies. Well, and CEO uh, Ben Silverman says, you know, you mentioned maybe people don't really realize they're seeing an ad, and he says they're going to go out of their way to make sure that mm -hmm. nobody feels duped about it or is clicking on something that they didn't realize was was an ad. But, uh, but yeah, that sort of remains to be seen as well. It's going to be like flashing neon colors. Oh, just like the iOS 7, just like bright green yeah. everywhere. Exactly. All right, let's move on to a story about Google changing some things, design changes, really. It's made its new logo flat, which kind of just means it stripped out some of the black shadowing in its logo that you know and love. So it's a familiar flat version of Google, which actually kind of almost takes it back to how I feel like it used to look. And then an app launcher, which is replacing that black bar that many of us have gotten used to as far as our navigation bar on the top of our browser pages. If you've got Gmail open or Google Drive or Google Calendar that has links to your uh, Google Plus account and your profile, and so on. Now, I could not get the new launcher to load, at least for me, and it sounds like it, it's, it's rolling out for users. It has begun rolling out. Uh, TechCrunch reports previously, they didn't think that this change was going to go into effect for a couple of months, and it looks like it's rolling out at least on, on some schedule to some users. But let's say, okay, well, eventually we'll all get this. It seems like a lot of the nav is just hidden inside a, a, a button that you can that you can click and then you get your options of where you'd like to go next. I like the idea. I never really liked that black bar all that much, even though I got used to it. I thought it was sort of ugly and I didn't really like all of that stuff hanging across uh, the top of my browser screen. Lindsay, what do you th what do you think about the changes Google's made making? I don't, you know, these are kind of small changes ultimately, like you said, I think it's not adding any clicks. It's adding, it, it makes you have to concentrate a little bit more, honestly. Like if it works, I don't have it yet, but if it works the way that I think it does, you have to hover. Turns out I do have it. Hold on one second. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, aren't you lucky? You have yeah. it? You got it? How? Hopefully I'm not. Hey, you, you know what? You do. Hold you on go. one second. Yeah, let me, <laughs> let me figure out what I've even got there before I take it. But yeah, continue talking. I'll show it off here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all read Jason's email. I know, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I like I I don't like the black bar aesthetically. I think that it's kind of easy though. I see the words. I click on them. People don't like change. They'll get used to it. I don't. I kind of think it's not a big deal. I guess. Well, when I saw this this change, it reminded me of when uh, there's that new Chrome web apps where you have the same looking launcher. They've added this. This is very consistent with Android. So the fact that Google itself, Google proper and the websites are being influenced a little bit more by Android 
and the version of Google that sh that Google shows on Android, it's given this new design language that I think is a lot nicer looking than that horrible black bar. It's now, so much better. It, it does allow for good branding too. It lets Google brand its its apps and products. Mm -hmm. more Although it is hidden, I suppose mm -hmm. at this point Google's like, you know, it just doesn't make as much sense to remind everyone at all times of all of the other properties within Google Drive and 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 the Google experience that they are there. If they want it, they'll click on it and let's make it look nicer. There's just massive, the old one is massive text, you know, your name, search, images, maps, play, YouTube, news, Gmail, Drive, calendar. Just give me the little the little thing to click. It's just consistent. I think it's it's a cleaner interface if they can keep it that way. So that way, at least the your your data isn't being pushed further and further down on the page. That's really what what's interesting to me about this. Exactly. All right, let's move on to it's a new breed. It's a new breed of people. No, no, not even cord cutters. That's right. There's something else entirely. Yeah, thanks to, uh, I guess, Chloe, uh, or I don't know this person, Chloe Wen on our TNT Reddit for bringing up the story. It's about cord nevers. This is a cord never generation, apparently. Bloomberg's talking about this new class of people. These are people who, have, who are watching video content who have never subscribed to pay TV. Now, in the year 2013, this year, it's on pace to be the first year that U.S. pay TV subscriptions will decline falling to 100.8 million from 100.9 million from last year. So it's not a huge decline, but it's a, it is a decline. Uh, while 3.2 million new U.S. households were set up in the last three years, the paid TV industry only added 250,000 subs in the, in the same time period, according to SNL Kagan. Telecoms have taken a chunk out of, of that since Verizon and AT&T become cable, uh, cable companies, I guess uh, television providers, excuse mm -hmm. me. Cord nevers apparently are a legitimate concern, according to 21st Century Fox, saying uh, that this is this is trouble. Bloomberg writes that the bundling approach may contribute to the growth of cord nevers, as some viewers just aren't prepared to pay that amount of money for a bunch of networks that they don't watch. Lindsay, is this going to finally lead to unbundled cable services, more cable systems on the Internet? Nothing? Yeah, I Here's what I think. I think that even the cord never the cord nevers are young, right? They don't pay for anything, probably. They, <laughs> you know, they're probably still eating dorm food, and and that's... And that's fine. I think that they will pay for things eventually, but I, I kind of agree. I don't think it's going to be a, ca a traditional cable television package. I think they're going to pay for Netflix when the amazing creative work that they want to see is on Netflix, or they're going to pay for Hulu, or they're going to pay for some future collection of of really like good TV. Um, and, and I think that there's really a lot to be said for the idea that people are going to stop paying for stuff they're never going to watch. I feel like we've been talking about when the tide is going to turn for cable subscriptions for a while now. We have so much evidence to suggest that eventually cable subscriptions just will fall apart in their current state because, yeah, there's just too much bloat that people are interested, aren't interested in paying for. You've got issues like sports packages. Still, some people say, well, yeah, I don't really want to spend $100, but I really need the, to see these certain games. So you kind of can lock in that way. I found that once I got rid of my cable subscription, my life changed it's in so many ways for the better. I mean, I just watched less junk. I didn't even really want to watch most of that stuff. It was just on all of the time. And it's sort of become fun to sort of hack together other alternatives for myself. I watch shows that I never would have watched before that I'm really, really enjoying because I love the on-demand aspect of it. So I think that I'm not alone. I think that there are just a lot of people who either say, you know, it's better this way, or, Lindsay, as you mentioned, there are younger people who don't really understand the whole concept of why would you pay for all this junk in a cable subscription when we have all of our, all, all our on-demand services. And, yes, there's a variety of set-top boxes and smart TVs that make this easier and easier. I'm thinking this is probably going to lead to more uh, more services on online. So if you're not going to bother with the cable box, we've talked, we've heard about Intel trying to get some kind of system going over the internet. Sony apparently working on the same kind of thing, trying to get TV, basically the old style of cable bundles over the internet. Because if that's just an option, another subscription you pay for on the web, I think people might be used to doing that mm -hmm. more so than saying yes, have that installer come over, install this piece of hardware that I need to have, as opposed to I got my modem. I don't really need anybody else when it comes to this. So I'm hoping this is going to lead to more competition in in the internet space when it comes to subscriptions. I seriously doubt we're going to see a, a an unbundling. If you want to watch AMC, you probably have to buy like 
buy it from this, from whatever company owns AMC. Like, there's five different things. But that's still, I mean, that's not solving the problem. It's the same problem, well, just in sell, a smaller structure. You sell to the court nevers because they have, as far as they're concerned, it's like Netflix. They're like, I'll just pay for this too. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on to the randomizer. randomizer. All right, let's take a look at our straw poll and see what pulled ahead between a hotel that lets you stay for free if you have enough Instagram followers, 10,000 in fact. Oh, actually, that's what it, well, that's what won, didn't it? Yeah. Oh. No, it didn't. It didn't actually. Mid results right now. So what have we got? <laughs> yeah, we no, that, <laughs> that lost pretty uh, soundly to oh. Len Draws Our Guest, Lindsay Turrentine. I hadn't clicked on the <laughs> results yet. Okay, well, people have spoken. Uh -huh. Apparently, we want to do something different today. Very different. And have Len draw Lindsay. Yeah. Which oh, is oh, that's so oh, cute. That's awesome. That's the best. I love it. What am I holding? It's like holding a, a sign that says Len Rocks. <laughs> Maybe even a lollipop or something. <laughs> it could be a lollipop. It's a lollipop that says Len Rocks. Oh, that's great. I love it. Yeah, if you were watching live earlier, we were just goofing around as, as something Len could do. And then I, we put it in as, as a straw poll option. If you watch the live show, we do a straw poll for the randomizer. And uh, yeah, 75% <laughs> of those who voted chose Len drawing our guest, Lindsay Turrentine. That, I love that. That's awesome. That's my new Twitter iPhone. That's, that's so good. There's probably also a lot of other people who don't really care about a hotel that lets you stay for free because 10,000 followers is a lot on Instagram. That is a lot. Let's see. There we go. Boom. All right. All right. <laughs> With lower third intact. Perfect. Thank you. I love it. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, we'll see what else Glenn drew uh, after we see what's on the calendar. Well, Oracle Open World is starting on Sunday the 22nd. It runs through the 26th in San Francisco. So does Java 1. This is also an Oracle event. They are concurrent events happening next week. And Microsoft is holding a Surface 2 event in New York City Monday the 23rd. All right. Well, you know, that kind of gets to the end of our show. Thanks, uh, we have Almost. one more one more sponsor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Case of the Fridays, of course. Before before we uh, look at some of the uh, the awesome artwork that Len has created, let's take a moment to thank Pro XBN for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Today. Are you worried about your online freedom? Of course you are. What about privacy? Ah, some people say privacy is dead. Governments and ISPs want to control what you're seeing, what you're sharing. They want to keep a record of everything you do. Free Wi-Fi, not always free Wi-Fi because you're paying for it because you're not really all that secure. Passwords and sensitive data can be intercepted a lot easier than you think. That's why ProXPN, a global VPN, that's virtual private network, works with almost any internet connection and keeps you safe. You create a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes through, back and forth. An online application can work with ProXPN, so that's a web browser or your email client, file sharing, instant messaging. ProXPN works with all of those to keep everything you do hidden and safe, it even disguise your physical location. So you, you can not have to worry about where you're surfing if you're in a, if you're in a public place. Complete online privacy through a 512-bit encryption tunnel. You can bypass internet filtering, bypass blocked websites, protect yourself against these six strikes rules that you hear with your ISPs. ProXPN software for Windows and Mac offers advanced controls as well, so you can select the programs and ports to anonymously route through XPN servers. Lots of customizations there. World-class customer support, which is a good, good plus. And Steve Gibson gave it a great review on security now. We all know Steve Gibson is the end-all, be-all of great advice when it comes to security. So if it's good enough for Steve Gibson, it's good enough for us. Go to proxpn.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. Premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for a year, but we have a special offer. Use the code TNT to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than $5 a month on that yearly plan for a lot of security. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. ProXPN.com slash twit. Sign up with the code TNT, and we thank ProXPN for their support of Tech News Today. Now, I would like to go through some of Len's artwork and see what else he drew besides an awesome portrait of Lindsay. 
Oh, yeah. Well, um, going backwards to the story, starting with story number one, uh, the new iPhones are out, uh, and there was something that something familiar about all of this where people are going out and, and, and just getting them. It's almost zombie-like in a way, so that's why I thought that uh, it would make sense to do an iPhone 5Z. Oh, I love that. Where you, where you have the zombies going out and getting... IPhone. All the, and I'm an iPhone person, so I'm, you know, no offense to any Apple people. I just thought it's kind of funny to do that. Um, this one, the, the, the you know, you, you guys call these phablets. I had never heard that until today. Uh, that shows how tech-oriented I am. Phablets are part of this complete breakfast. There's someone eating that. You said, did I get that? You can eat phablets, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, Twitter and the IPO, I think, is going to lead to a new hashtag, which might already exist, which is TweetBucks. Love cheap, it. Cheap, cheap, blue, blue TweetBucks. Looks nice. Yeah. Uh, Pinterest. <laughs> uh, Pinterest uh, having a, uh, a field day with some of the ads possibly coming up here. Uh, you pinned food and trendy, so take 50% off this veggie burger at your favorite hipster gastropub. <laughs> I think that's how it could probably work uh, uh, on Pinterest. And I actually think it's a very good idea, and, and I, I agree with the ads on Pinterest. Um, the new Google logo, uh, the one person who really loves it, of course, is Flat Stanley. Who says oh. he loves the Google logo? Wow, <laughs> well, perfect, perfect. Stanley. Like <laughs> there you go, the throwback there. And then finally, the Cord Nevers, kind of a new group here. Uh, I just sort of drew them at what I thought they might look like. The co the the uh, the Code Nevers are sort of these Skyrim Vikings. looking Viking guys yeah. who are killing the cords. Uh, a little bit different than uh, than the cord cutters. <laughs> they are actually killing the cords. So there you go. Oh, I and love. Of course, I love this. Back to back to Lindsay there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm putting the link for the uh, straw poll. You can actually vote which one of these uh, I'm going to put in my online store. If you're in the chat room right now, you can actually vote on that and decide which one you'd like to see. Oh, it's so. so great. Thank you, Len. As always, great work. Tell folks where they can see more of the kind of artwork that you do on a regular basis. Well, sure thing. You can actually go to my online uh, store from uh, bit, bit.ly uh, bit forward slash twitlen, uh, or you can follow me online at Len Peralta, and uh, you can see all the wonderful things I'm doing. There's all kinds of great stuff in the online store. Uh, you can commission me and all these other great things. So check it out and make sure you, uh, you say hello. And thanks to Lindsay Turntine, Editor-in-Chief of CNET Reviews. Lindsay, what is happening over at CNET, and, and how can uh, folks follow what you're up to these days? Uh, well, we have actually a lot of exciting stuff happening. We just, uh, yesterday, launched CNET en Español, uh, which is a completely oh. new website. Congratulaciones. It is, um, it's a fiesta here all the time. It's really exciting. There's a lot of custom content on that site, it, just specifically for Spanish speakers. Uh, so that's very exciting for us. And then we also recently launched um, our new smart appliances section, which is all about the connected home. And we built this 12,000 square foot facility in Louisville, Kentucky, wow. where we're testing smart appliances. It's really cool. Amazing. CNET.com yeah. slash appliances to find yep. out more CNET. about that. CNET.com slash appliances for that. And for CNET in Espanol, CNET.com slash ES. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us, as always. Uh, and thanks to everybody who submitted uh, stories and voted them up and down in our subreddit. Technewstoday.reddit.com is where you can go to help us choose the stories of the day that you are interested in and you want us to talk about. And on Monday, we've got Charlotte Henry, who will be joining us. In the meantime, you can send us an email, tnt at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 260-TNT-SHOW. Until Monday, have a wonderful weekend, everybody.